Welcome to Hood Politics. In this episode, I will be discussing the war between the Grape Street Watts Crips and the East Coast Crips. The facts of the case are as follows. Watts is a neighborhood located on the east side of South Central Los Angeles. Movies like Training Day, Imperial Dreams, and Menace to Society all feature scenes shot in Watts. Watts is the home of the 1965 Watts Riots, the Watts Towers, and restaurants like Hawkins House of Burgers and the now-closed Jordan's Cafe, which serves some of the best soul food in the city. But Watts is also home to some of the most notorious gangs in Los Angeles history, one of those gangs being the Grape Street Watts Crips. Grape Street originally formed as Watts Vario Grape and had blacks and Latinos within its ranks. But in the early 1970s, black members formed the Jordan Down Crips, and by the late 1970s, they transitioned into Grape Street Crips. The Latino members remained Watts Vario Grape and later became Southside Watts Vario Grape 13, and the black members became Eastside Grape Street Watts Crips. The two gangs share the same territory, the same enemies, and remain close to this day. The Grape Street Crips have dominated the Jordan and Downs projects in the surrounding streets for well over 40 years. They have numerous cliques, including Dust Town Hogs, Parolees, 103rd Street, Peter Rowe Mafia, and many others. The East Coast Crips are a gang spread throughout the east side of South Central Los Angeles and beyond. The East Coast Crips formed throughout the late 1970s and the 1980s. Many of the gangs that are now East Coast sets existed before joining the Alliance, such as the 6ix9ine Shack Boys and the Q102 Town Street Boys. It's said that the Crips founder Raymond Washington formed the East Coast Crips because he wanted to reunify the now fractured East Side Crips, which he formed in 1969. There have been many theories regarding the origin of the East Coast Crip name. Some say it's because the East Coast sets resemble a coastline, and others say East Coast was just another way of saying East Side. But no theory has been validated, and much of the first-hand knowledge has been lost. The East Coast Crips are comprised of the following sets. First Street, which was located in the Aliso Village projects in Boyle Heights, but faded from the area due to pressure from law enforcement, wars with the surrounding gangs, and demographic change. They are still active and are considered a nomadic gang. The other East Coast sets are 5-9, 6 Deuce, 6-6, six, 6-8, six, six, eight, six, nine, seven, six, eight, nine, nine, seven, Q102, 11-8, 190, which is in the city of Carson, and 1200 block, which is in the city of Riverside. First to Q102 are considered East Coast neighborhood cribs, while 11 8 to 1200 are considered East Coast block cribs. For decades, Grape Street and East Coast were on good terms. It wasn't uncommon to find Grape Street members hanging out in East Coast hoods and East Coast members hanging out in the Jordan Downs projects. The two gangs would attend each other's hood days and have football games against each other. But one night, that all changed. On Saturday, January 26, 2008, Grape Street and East Coast members attended a party at a rented hall on Florence Avenue. By all accounts, the night was going well. There was food, drinks, and music, and everyone seemed to be having a good time. But as the night went on, things would take a turn for the worse. Around 1 a.m., an argument ensued between East Coast members and Grape Street members. Moments later, a gun was drawn. And when that gun was drawn, more guns were drawn, and gunfire was exchanged. The area was in complete chaos as the party goers fled the scene. When the smoke cleared, there were six people shot. One of them was a 25-year-old man named Brandon Bullard. Brandon was transported to a nearby hospital where he was pronounced dead. Brandon was a beloved member of Grape Street and went by the nicknames BL and BZ. Although just 25 years old, Brandon was viewed as a leader by other Grape Street members. Also among the shot was a 17-year-old young man named Bruce Adams. Bruce was also a beloved member of Grape Street and went by the nickname Tanky. He was transported to the hospital and treated for his wounds. Detectives were familiar with Brandon and knew the status he held within Grape Street, which put them on edge. Because a few years prior, Brandon was shot in the face by a bounty hunter blood member, and that incident turned an already deadly rivalry even more deadly, resulting in back-to-back -back shootings and multiple murders. A few hours after Brandon's murder, Grape Street members ventured into numerous East Coast hoods and opened fire on well-known hangouts. In one shooting, a man named Ezell Ford was struck in the leg while on 66th Street between Broadway and Grand Avenue, which is in the territory of the 6-6 East Coast Crips. 
12 hours after Brandon's murder, around 1 p.m., a 22-year-old man named Mario Proctor was standing on the front porch with his friend Rashad at a residence located on 101st Street in the Jordan Downs. Shortly afterwards, a black Chevy Impala with tinted windows slowly drove down the street. The Impala drove past, and about a minute later it returned, this time stopping near where Mario and Rashad were standing. A man exited the front passenger seat and started shooting, firing around 17 shots. Rashad was struck in the hand, but was otherwise okay. Mario was struck in his leg, arm, and head. Mario was transported to a nearby hospital. At 1.30 p.m., Mario was pronounced dead. Mario was a beloved member of Grape Street and went by the nickname Gus. Detectives arrived at the scene and began their investigation. There are several surveillance cameras scattered throughout the Jordan Downs, and investigators were able to pull footage from one nearby. The video showed the Impala drive down 101st Street, make a U-turn, and head towards Mario and Rashad. Detectives got a description of the vehicle, and two days after the shooting, they arrested a man named Daniel Colvin and impounded his vehicle. Daniel drove a black Chevy Impala with tinted windows. Two days after Daniel's arrest, police arrested another man named Seth Cedric Johnson. During the search of Cedric's apartment, investigators found numerous items indicating his connection to the East Coast Crips, including pictures and papers with gang writing. Investigators also found a printout from the LA Times homicide blog. It was a report of Brandon's murder. Daniel and Cedric both admitted to being members of the East Coast Crips. Daniel and Cedric were placed in monitored jail cells where their conversation and phone calls were recorded. Both men made statements indicating that they were in the Impala at the time of the shooting. In one conversation, Daniel admitted to being the driver of the car, and in another conversation, he said his mother got rid of the gun for him. Daniel Colvin and Cedric Johnson were charged with first-degree murder for the death of Mario Proctor. They were also charged with attempted murder for the shooting of Rashad, as well as gun and gang enhancement charges. During the trial, the prosecutor presented the following evidence against Daniel and Cedric. All of the recorded jail conversations were played for the jury. Detectives played the surveillance video of Daniel's Impala traveling down 101st Street, making a U-turn and driving back towards Mario and Rashad. An investigator told the court about the rivalry between Grape Street and East Coast and how Daniel and Cedric were willing participants in an active gang war by driving into the Jordan Downs and looking for rival Grape Street members. Ultimately, Daniel Coven and Cedric Johnson were found guilty with the murder of Mario Proctor and the attempted murder of Rashad, as well as gun and gang enhancement charges. Daniel Coven was sentenced to 50 years to life in prison. Cedric Johnson was also sentenced to 50 years to life in prison. The day after Mario's murder, on January 28th, around 8.45 a.m., a 19-year-old man named Van Knott was talking to a friend on 97th Street when someone in a Dodge Charger approached them and opened fire. Van was hit multiple times in the chest and transported to a hospital where he was pronounced dead. The shooting took place in 97 East Coast Crip territory. Investigators believe Grape Street was responsible. Also on January 28th, around 9.30 p.m., a 36-year-old man named Chantel Johnson was at his clothing store, located on the corner of Broadway and 99th Street. Shortly afterwards, someone opened fire into the store. Chantel and two other people were shot. The two others survived, but Chantel was pronounced dead at the scene. Investigators believe Grape Street was responsible. The war between Grape Street and East Coast continued throughout the following weeks and months. Two gangs that were once close had become bitter enemies. On March 18, 2008, at around 10.20 p.m., a 23-year-old man named Kiwan Bullard was involved in an altercation at a popular skating rink located in the city of Cerritos called Skate Depot. During the altercation, someone pulled a gun and opened fire, striking Kiwan. Officers patrolling the area heard the shots and made their way to the scene. When they arrived, they found Kiwan laying on the ground. Kiwan was transported to a hospital. At 1.08 a.m., Kiwan was pronounced dead. Kiwan was the younger brother of Brandon and had just spoken at Brandon's funeral a few weeks prior. Kiwan was a beloved member of Grape Street and went by the nickname Tweeter. Investigators believe the East Coast Crips were responsible. On April 12, 2008, Bruce Adams, the 17-year-old who had been shot along with Brandon at the party on Florence Avenue, was pronounced dead due to complications from his injuries. 
and another incident on August 25, 2008, around 5.30 p.m. Three vehicles, including a blue Jeep Cherokee, drove down Main Street and stopped on 70th Street. At this time, there was a party being thrown at a home on 70th Street, and around 20 people were standing outside. Among the party goers was a woman named Deshana, her friend Cassandra, Kevin, who was walking around the neighborhood while pushing his six-year-old brother Robert in a toy car. Also present was a 55-year-old man named Leroy Smith, who was Kevin's stepfather. Shortly afterwards, a man exited the blue jeep with a rifle and opened fire on the group. The party goers ran as the man shot between 20 and 40 rounds in rapid succession. The man then returned to the jeep, and all three vehicles fled the scene. When the smoke cleared, Deshana, Kevin, Robert, and Leroy had all been shot. Deshana, Kevin, and Robert survived. Leroy was transported to a hospital where he was pronounced dead. The shooting took place in 6-9 East Coast Crip territory. Detectives arrived at the scene and began their investigation. After speaking to witnesses and gathering vehicle descriptions, they suspected a man named Randall Coleman was the shooter. Randall was a well-known member of Grape Street and went by the nickname Gooby. Police had multiple interactions with Randall in the past, where he admitted to being a Grape Street member. Deshana and Cassandra both picked Randall out of a photographic lineup. Randall Coleman was arrested and charged with first-degree murder for the death of Leroy Smith. He was also charged with the attempted murders of Deshana, Kevin, and Robert, as well as gun and gang enhancement charges. Randall later pled not guilty. On October 3, 2008, police officers were patrolling the Jordan Downs when they saw a Grape Street member named Ricky standing on the sidewalk with the rifle in his hands. Ricky ran and threw the rifle under a parked car as officers chased him through the projects. Officers arrested Ricky and recovered the rifle. It was the same rifle used in the shooting on 70th Street. During the trial, Deshana and Cassandra both identified Randall as the shooter. Multiple police officers took the stand and told the court about having numerous interactions with Randall, where he admitted to being a member of Grape Street, and Randall had been arrested while riding in a blue Jeep, similar to the one described in the 70th Street shooting. The gang expert for the case was an LAPD officer named Samuel Marullo. Marullo told the court about the rivalry between Grape Street and East Coast. He went on to explain how the shooting was just one incident and a long string of incidents between the gangs. Marullo said he believes that the shooting was committed in benefit of the Grape Street Crips. The defense claimed that Randall was not the shooter and he had been attending a birthday party at his girlfriend Wanisha's house at the time of the shooting. Randall also denied being a member of Grape Street. A man named Douglas Compton testified on behalf of the defense. Douglas was an East Coast member and had been present at the time of the shooting. Douglas told the court that Randall was not the shooter. Douglas acknowledged that a snitch is someone who reports a crime or testify against someone charged with the crime, which no East Coast member was permitted to do, and that same code of silence extended to all gang members. Randall's mother, Tracy, testified that she dropped him off at Wanisha's house around 11.30 a.m. She said she drove by the house around 5 p.m. and saw him on the porch. Tracy acknowledged that that Randall and her other son, Trinell, were both members of Grape Street and that she lived in the Jordan Downs. Wanisha testified that Randall arrived between 11 a.m. and 12 p.m. and he was picked up by his mother at 10 or 11 p.m. She said she didn't see him leave for a significant amount of time, but she also didn't watch him the entire time. Wanisha told the court that Randall wasn't a member of Grape Street. Randall's cousin, Michael, who the party was thrown for, and a neighbor named Shivana, both testified to seeing Randall on the porch at the time of the shooting. Deshana was also called to the stand due to her giving investigators inconsistent statements about the shooter's height and weight. She also initially told police that a person named Douglas Taylor was at the party on the day of the shooting, but later recanted her statement. Ultimately, Randall Coleman was found guilty with the murder of Leroy Smith and the attempted murders of Deshana, Kevin, and Robert, as well as gun and gang enhancement charges. Randall Coleman was sentenced to 173 years to life in prison. In another incident, on September 23, 2008, a 20-year-old man named DeBruce Smith was at a Compton train station, along with his girlfriend Jacqueline and his best friend Terry Dozier. DeBruce was a member of the 8-9 East Coast Crips. Shortly afterwards, two people drove up to DeBruce and told him that there was a Grape Street member behind them and that one of them got into it with them, but he wasn't anything to worry about. A few minutes later, a 17-year-old young man named Richard Robertson walked past DeBruce. DeBruce recognized him as the Grape Street member that he was told about a little while earlier. DeBruce caught up with Richard and the two began to argue. The two separated and Richard called someone on his cell phone. Jacqueline told DeBruce to 
to walk away, but he refused and stated, if he's going to call his people, I'm going to call mine. But a few moments later, he did agree to walk away, and they started walking back to where they initially were. Shortly afterwards, De Bruce's cousin, Tanar, joined them. De Bruce was pacing back and forth on the platform. Richard was standing nearby with two other people, talking on his cell phone. De Bruce told Tanar that this young cat right here tripping, in reference to Richard. As De Bruce headed off the platform, Richard ran after him and made derogatory statements about De Bruce and the East Coast Cribs. Tanar offered a fade to Richard, which means a fist fight, but Richard declined and stated, when my homies get here, there ain't gonna be no fading. De Bruce was on parole and didn't want to fight, but he again refused to leave the area. A short while later, a black Chevy Tahoe pulled up to the train station. Three women and a man named Ronald Brim exited the vehicle. Minutes later, another man named Leo Lloyd Adams arrived at the train station in a champagne-colored car. Richard said it's going down and pointed out De Bruce's group to Ronald. Ronald reached through the front passenger window of Leo's car and pulled out a rifle. He cocked it and opened fire. The train station was in chaos as the rush hour crowd of people ran and hid for cover. Ronald fired at least 12 shots. He then returned to the Tahoe and the vehicle fled the scene. Three bystanders were struck, but they survived. De Bruce and his best friend Terry were both shot while running away, and both men died at the scene. Detectives arrived at the scene and began their investigation. The black Tahoe and the champagne-colored car had been captured on surveillance video at the train station. Ronald was arrested for drunk driving, and the officer identified his Tahoe as the one involved in the shooting. Jacqueline and another bystander picked Richard out of a photographic lineup. Leo was arrested in 2010. He owned a gold Pontiac, similar to the champagne-colored car involved in the shooting. Cell phone records indicated that phones registered to Ronald and Leo were used near the train station at the time of the shooting and traveled away afterwards. Records also showed that Ronald called Leo's phone immediately before the shooting. Leo Lloyd Adams, Ronald Brim, and Richard Robertson were all charged with two counts of first-degree murder for the deaths of DeBruce Smith and Terry Dozier. They were also charged with the attempted murders of three bystanders, as well as gun and gang enhancement charges. Richard was a minor at the time of the shooting, so his case was handled through the juvenile court system. Ultimately, Leo Lloyd Adams was sentenced to two life sentences without the possibility of parole, and three life sentences with the possibility of parole, plus 125 years in prison. Ronald Brim was sentenced to death. Six years after being wounded by Grape Street members, on Monday, August 11th, 2014, Ezel Ford was shot and killed by LAPD officers. The LAPD's version of events was that officers observed Ezel walking down the street and believed he may have been carrying a weapon or drugs. The officers exited their vehicle and attempted to stop him, but he didn't follow their orders or show his hands. The officers then took him to the ground and Ezel was on his stomach while an officer was on his back. According to the LAPD, Ezel began reaching for the officer's gun, so the officer drew his backup firearm and shot Ezel three times. Witnesses told a different version of events. They said that those officers were familiar with Ezel and knew that he was mentally ill, but still regularly harassed him. They also said that Ezel was already subdued when he was shot. Ezel's death sparked numerous protests throughout the streets of Los Angeles. Brandon's memory still lives on within Grape Street. Members can often be heard saying, on Beezy, in reference to Brandon. The term has become so ingrained amongst Grape Street members that even younger members who never got to know Brandon use it. Members also nicknamed a parking lot near Brandon's old unit in the Jordan Downs. They call it Beezy Lot and throw parties there from time to time in his memory. These have been just a few of the incidents that have taken place between the Grape Street Watts Crips and the East Coast Crips. Over the years, many anti-gang organizations and community leaders have attempted to orchestrate a peace treaty between the gangs, but so far, none have been successful. I want to thank you guys for tuning in. Please like, comment, and subscribe.